On today's episode, the Cubs are drafting all the pitchers out in the universe. We'll rank the trade chips leading up to the deadline, and we go down the farm highlighting recent promotions, plus news and notes on the big league level. That is all on this edition of Locked on Cubs. You are Locked on Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Cubs alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Thank you for being with us today. If this is your first time, thanks for giving us a shot. If you're a longtime listener, we appreciate you as well. Please subscribe and follow on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Also, click subscribe on YouTube, like our videos, comment, uh, do whatever helps us out as we continue to rise up as a show and a part of this network. We're really excited, Sam. Uh, can I just say something? <clears throat> sure, you got uh, some phlegm there. Yeah, excuse me. A uh, few people, more than one person, made fun of our backgrounds to me over Twitter the last few days, and I yeah. just want to say that I'm aware of it. Uh, but I appreciate you watching the show, and when this team becomes watchable on the baseball field, I will go get myself a piece of a background. Right now, I don't want to do it, uh, and, and I'm fine with a white background. I'm a plain guy. I'm a simple guy. Not a lot of people like me. That's fine. Go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, listen, the backgrounds are going to fluctuate. Uh, I, I'm very content with my setup right now. It, it, it looks like we're recording from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, Sam. Let's so talk about the show. Huh? <laughs> as of this moment, <laughs> the Cubs are drafting almost exclusively pitchers. I say almost because their third-round pick was a high school shortstop. Before that, just like we highlighted on Tuesday's program, they drafted Horton and Ferris. Well, ever since the high school shortstop, it's been only pitchers. And even as of um, publication time, to use an old school newspaper term, they keep drafting pitchers. We're now through round 14, and it's still been pitchers. So the first nine of 10 picks being on the bump, uh, also pitchers in the secondary rounds as we close out the draft today through round 20. The Cubs have established that it's going to be an arms race with them. Yeah, and and you know I think people sometimes overreact to the draft, especially in baseball, because every single one of these guys, maybe once every couple of years, somebody comes around in the first round that isn't a project and is is MLB ready. It's very rare. All these guys that they're drafting, they they have identified a skill that they like. It looks like among most of these pitchers, the, the, the common skill I'm seeing is either a funky arm angle, funky arm slot and B a wicked sweeping slider slash breaking ball. So they've obviously identified a need or something that they feel like they could work with, with, with their new, their new pitching, you know, I don't want to say factory, but their new pitching, you know, infrastructure. Yeah. And, um, they, they they're they're selecting it and it's going to take time i'm thrilled with this draft i'm thrilled with where the farm system is at now going into this draft you felt really strong about their position player depth down on the farm all the way down to 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 really you know christian hernandez who's not even in high a yet mm -hmm. and you know all the way up through ben, brendan davis and triple a um, and we're going to talk about some of these promotions here later on. And now they've loaded up on pitching and they've done this in the past, but this feels different. This feels like they have an idea and a goal. And, you know, the, the, to me, the draft has been a check. They did their job now becomes the hard part because uh, as we see with the, a lot of these teams, these pitchers come in and they blossom with certain teams and it's on the Cubs now to become one of those certain teams and really put these guys through the blender, right? And, and pitching in, in both ways, Matt, there, there's a lot of development to be had when, when you draft somebody. But to me, pitching you could do the most with, right? You could, yes. add, you could add pitches. You could add spin rate. You could add velocity. I mean, mm -hmm. you could take somebody. And that's why pitching, it's so crazy. You know, you take a Corbin Burns type of pitcher that, you know, once upon a time had the highest ERA in the NL and is now one of the most dominant guys. It is so volatile, the pitching game. And you, you feel like you're one Jake Arrieta away from – 
you know, being in a really good spot. And it's the Cubs job now to, to, to do that. And, and they've put themselves in a great position to do so. They've given themselves a lot of options and a lot of depth. Great job doing that. Now we judge and we wait and we be patient. We see what happens with these guys. I feel semi-confident that they know what they're doing now. Like I said, when, when I had my rant a week ago after the Dodger series, that was judging off what I'm seeing now, which was really mistakes made two, three years ago. Let's see what happens. Um, you know, I'm still excited to watch Steele and Thompson pitch at the big league level, see things that they're working on getting better. Like again, Keegan Thompson added that big slider, you know, that's that same yeah. sweep. It's that same sweeping slider that they keep drafting big pitch right now. Yeah. So, um, I'm intrigued. Um, I, I, I am, I'm intrigued is, is I think the best word uh, about the draft and, and then what it does for the Cubs farm system. They clearly had an aggressive nature, an aggressive plan to stockpile on arms this time. It just is what it is. Maybe that's a little bit of a Carter Hawkins factor, the new GM from, from Cleveland who has a strong pitching background. Maybe Jed Hoyer is just is really convicted about uh, perhaps, if you want to call it, the mistakes of the previous regimes and the previous drafts. I mean, you can make a case that this is the anti 2016 draft. This is the anti, well, know, they've 14 to 18 period. Yeah, right. They've drafted a lot of pitchers before. Not not in the first round, but I think I don't remember if it was the 19 or 18 draft. They drafted like eight or nine in a row, I think. Yeah. But like I said, this just feels different. It feels like they have a plan. And, and when somebody has a plan, I respect it and I'm here to wait for it. And and as I said on yesterday's show, as I continue to say, there's two different types of fandom right now. There's the fandom that we're talking about right now that's logical, patient, and intrigued about what's happening, but at the same time realizing that that's not happening until at least next year, and we still have to watch this baseball team every day, and it's okay to be frustrated by that. And, and unlike some people on Twitter – I understand how to separate those two things. I understand how to say, hey, I like where this team's future is headed, but it's still really tough to watch my team lose every day. But the good news is you see my calmness. I'm not stressed because they're not playing right now. So we get to talk about the good side. Yeah, that's true. It's a little bit of an adjustment for me as the point guard that you're in this type of mood now two or three days in a row. Yeah, no Cubs baseball means – relaxation asmr there you go um and, and you can never have enough pitching and so i'm excited about that prospect of well hey i see all these guys in the minor leagues that are up there on the board they're position players okay let's who's going to play in front of them who's going to be on the mound and a lot of exciting things well, there and, for sure and, and and the thing is i'm excited for a young guy like jackson ferris to be able to learn mold himself and use an example like Daniel Norris. Yeah, he he's a good example of no. That's a laugh. That's a laugh. That's a laugh. You can't go with that. That's right. You I gotta, carried that. Yeah, you can't carry that. That has to be an immediate ha ha ha. Because now there, there's about 350 listeners being like, "What the hell are these guys talking about?" <laughs> it's a joke, folks. Daniel Norris. Just keep him away from every pitcher unless you're serving him a bag of chips. And speaking of chips, we're going to get to the trade chips for the Cubs <laughs> later this month as we get closer to the deadline. Before we get to that, I want to Actually, we're going to do it later in the show, but whatever. Later, th that's what I said. You said later this month. Oh, I meant in reference to the deadline. Yeah, right. Which actually, that's inaccurate too, because the deadline, for whatever reason, at MLB is Tuesday, August 2nd. Yeah, and I have a job, so it's going to be hard for me. Before we get to that, I want to tell you about Blue Nile. Make your engagement moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Cubs listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. Use the code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece of wedding bling. Go to BlueNile.com today and use the code Locked on. Um, let's talk. Sorry, did I, I, I? You're done, right? Yes. Okay. Let's. I made a little bit of a list for this second part of the show. I want to rank the Cubs trade assets. We could do the top five of guys that 
who will bring back the most in a in a trade okay. and also who actually has the possibility to get traded. For example, the number one asset would be Nico Horner, but the Cubs are not going to be trading him, so we're not going to put him on there. Okay, right. the, And the way I judged this was like if there's just even a small chance that they get traded, I put him on here. Okay. okay? Yeah. So would you like to would you like to guess who number one on my list of of trade assets would be? Ian Happ. Incorrect. It's incorrect. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Can I tell you why he should be number one? But but when I say number one, you're gonna roll your eyes and say it's a little bit of a technicality. I put Marcus Stroman number one. Oh, now okay. now now he will not be traded, but I don't think it's like a, a hundred like a hundred percent that he's not traded. I think there's a small, small chance. And I think he would bring the most back in a trade uh because of, he, he still has two after this two years of control left and whatever. I don't think he's gonna be traded. That was kind of a trick thing just to be dumb. But yes, I, after Strowman would be Ian Happ. And I and we we have decided when we started the show, I said it was probably unlikely he's going to be traded. I have now been convinced that there's a good chance he will be. I think yeah. he bring, I think Ian Happ brings somebody back that will be a top 10 to 12 Cubs prospect. What do you think? I, I completely agree. I think that um, I, I think there is a chance the Cubs are going to try to be creative in this market and try to bring back a major league piece or two. But I think for Ian Happ, it's 100 percent going to be prospects. And okay. I think with him being signed through 23 and his value being as high as it is with how he's performing, he's without question the number one chip. And if the Cubs really want to make a dent in, in, in further into their system in a good way, uh, Hap is going to go by August 2nd because... And I, and I like him. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Go you could wait till the off season, but I don't know if that makes sense necessarily. No, 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 no. Strike no. while the iron is hot, and no. we're not talking about laundry. No, 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 no. That, not only in an off season. Um, and I like them to trade him to a team with, some, with, with a nice system. I mean, Houston's a really good candidate. The Dodgers are always a good candidate. Um, you know, the for Red guys Sox, that use an outfielder. Yeah, the, the White Sox. Mm -hmm. You know, but those trades haven't gone well for the Cubs in the past. Okay, so Ian Happ, number two, but really number one. I just think right. I, I just I just don't think it's a zero percent chance Strowman gets traded. I think it's like a five, and I and I feel like he would be he would be a really you know he'd bring back a lot. And Strowman would probably be part of a, a blockbuster, right? Like there'd be right. other players. You would think so? Okay, yeah. next. This was really hard for me. Well, number two, I'm going to go with David Robertson. Yeah, so I put Contreras ahead of Robertson, and the only okay. reason why is I just, I just feel like Roberts. I mean, both of them haven't been, both of them have had really nice years, and both of them have been struggling recently. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Robertson's 37. He's, you know, bullpen guys are so volatile. If he has one or two bad outings, his value goes to, you know, to whatever. Yes. Um, and I just the think, trash can. yeah. And I, I just think some team will value Contreras more than we do. Um, okay. but as we talked about on this show, um, I just don't think he's going to bring back what Cubs fans want. And it's going to be a whole thing when he gets traded. How can they not extend him? And da da da. It's just going to be a really eye rolling scenario. Wilson Contreras was deemed not a part of the Cubs team after this year, the minute they did not extend him before the season starts. There's no reason to, to, to uh, uh, not trade him. Even if you want to bring him back, you still trade him now and bring him back in the off season for the assets. So I went, I went hat. Uh, we'll forget Stroman. That was just more of a, just to get people curious. We'll go Hap. We'll go Contreras. We're going Robertson three, mm -hmm. number four. Number four, let me consult my list. I had Michael Givens fourth. And you, Matthew Frank Cozy, would be <laughs> correct. <laughs> I think Michael Givens should bring back more than a lottery ticket type prospect. He's thrown the ball magnificently lately. I know he took mm -hmm. two losses on Saturday, but he gave up zero earned runs in both those games. His velocity is 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 up. It's it's 93 to 95. You know, he Michael Givens is the type of guy. I think he he'd bring even more back if you didn't have the three batter minimum because he's just so tough on right handed pitchers. Mm -hmm. But you know you're in a situation where you know let's say you're facing the Yankees. There's first and second two outs in the sixth of a tie game. Might and Aaron Judge and Stanton are due up. I mean you feel really good about bringing Givens wow. in those spots. I, yeah. I would. I mean he's he he's had one blow up outing the whole year. I think it was against San Diego in June. 
and the rest of the year, he's been really solid. I, I think the Cubs turn him into something that is more than a lottery ticket. We're not talking about a top 15, top 20 prospect in the system, but more than just a guy that you're just like, oh, let's see what happens. Um, so that's but I, I, that's that's my opinion. Well, plus, Givens has been traded at the deadline not once but twice before. So if you think about the human factor of teams wanting to acquire players that no. it may be an adjustment, hey, you're in a new uniform – not for him because it's it's so, already happened with him. So for number five, I, I have number five. I want to give an honorable mention to Chris Martin for the exact same reason Givens. He just hasn't been as good. For number five, I think these guys, especially one of them, would bring back a lot. Again, I just don't think it's likely they trade him. But I did a combo for number five, like a slash. I couldn't decide okay. between the two. I'm going to say Smiley and Miley. Yeah, so I I don't think Smiley brings back anything, and I don't think Miley's tradable because he's hurt. I went with either Patrick Wisdom or Rafael Ortega. Now I think if Wisdom goes, he Those actually are good ones. I think if Wisdom goes, he actually brings back a lot, like a lot, meaning probably more than probably he slides in the top three. I just don't think the Cubs trade him. And then right. Ortega is not going to bring back that much, but I, I had him just a little ahead of Martin, maybe a team like the Rays that likes to platoon sees value in him hitting against righties. But the thing here, let, let me just pitch you this wisdom thing really quickly. Yeah. This, um, I haven't seen or heard this anywhere. This is great. Yeah. And, and, and that's why he's five because I just, I, I, I don't think it'll happen. Same reason why I really didn't count Stroman. Sure. But what if the Cubs go into next year, yeah, next year and there's like, all right, we really like Christopher Morrell. And we know that his best position is third base, and we want to see him there for the rest of the season and see if he can play it because Wisdom's starting to struggle defensively. Um, yes. It's a possibility that they move up for Wisdom. I doubt it. I'd probably say it's extremely unlikely, which is why he's five. But I do think if they were to, like, if, if they were to make a deal with Wisdom to the Rays, let's say, um, well, no, it would be the Rays. Andy Diaz is a pretty good third baseman. But somebody that, that needs some pop and, and some okay defense at third, I think he'd bring back some nice pieces too. I think he's another guy too that would probably be part of a package deal, like a Wisdom okay. a wisdom and a Robertson somewhere or, or something like that. Um, so I don't know. That's my five. I, 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 think, I think they end up trading – Hap probably, Contreras for sure, Robertson for sure, Givens for sure, those four, and then the rest is kind of up in the air. Yeah, Kyle I Hendricks think, will obviously not be traded. He's injured. He's Smiley's hurt, right. injured, so we'll see. Yeah, I think with Smiley just coming back, and maybe if there's a, a team down the stretch of the postseason that just needs another arm. Yeah, like a long to give, guy. To give length as a tweener or a right. slot start every now and then. Right. Um, I could see it like minutes before the deadline potentially just because he'll have started more between now and then. But otherwise, I think those are the main names that we all discussed. I think as a fan, despite the record of the team, it still is a little bit exciting and enticing that uh, there's going to be all this activity. Yeah, it's a bit strong for me. But um, I also want to make it clear and make an announcement that in, in addition to my Nico Horner jersey, I will be, I will be, I will be purchasing a Scott Efros oh. jersey. Yeah, or, or some type of shirt with that frost. Maybe Man, if there's an obvious shirt he or something. something special. Horner and Efrost are the best players, right? I'd like to absolutely. I'd like to try and and they and they deliver when it matters. I'd like to yes, that's a shot that happened, Contreras. I'd like to transition to our next thing, but before you you read our next ad, I'd like to remind people that if you listen to yesterday's show, I told you Juan Soto was gonna have a hell of a performance, and I bet that Juan Soto would have a hell of a performance, and I bet that he was going to win the home run derby. Success for me. What do you got for me? Matthew Frank Cozy. And, of course, Sam reminded me via text last night. He had to get the text in uh, that he, he picked Soto. Okay, we, we, we get it. And, and Bet Online is a place that you could have found your betting needs and sports info and, of course. and gotten that information about Soto. I did. You did do that, and that's yeah. because it is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments League reviews and news, including all things baseball. Tonight's the All-Star game. Who gets the first hit, for example? You can place a bet there. Head to betonline.net or download the app to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. Man, my favorite pitcher, Clayton Kershaw, that's not on the Cubs, versus my, my fantasy ace, Shane McClanahan. 
Yeah, no, it's a great matchup for lefties. And the NL lineup, especially after like the fourth or fifth spot, not very good. No, it's really weak. Can we find some second baseman? Jeff McNeil and Andre and Andre Jimenez and Santiago Espinal made the cut. I might as well go back to my second base days. You got to hit 265 with a 730 OPS in order to make the All-Star Club. Well, everybody's dropping from the game. Like 80 people have made the All-Star game now. Yeah, it's, it's enough. It's 10% of the league. Enough already. Okay, you, you get a great honor. Go to the All-Star game and play. You know what I'm saying? Uh, today, there's a big report, Sam, of a promotion in the Cubs farm system. Matt Mervis from double A to triple A. Mervis leads all affiliated ball with 80 RBI, That's 21 a lot of home RBI. runs. Uh, Don't to tell that to the analytical with, people. Yeah, great. To go along <laughs> with uh, 317 average, 376 on base, and OPS over nine. This guy has mashed, and the promotion is is well deserved, I think, especially as a corner infielder. So you got him, you got uh, Wicks to Double A, yes, you got Hertz to Double A. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're moving. Things are moving. I think you see you might see, if Mervis continues to hit, you might see him by September. You know, just to get a look, right? Totally, totally. You know, uh, which will be. Yeah, I mean, exciting. does Schwindel do it for you? <laughs> I mean, respectfully, he's just. You would rather see Mervis in September, I think. Uh, and then Bri- I think you know Bryce Balls had a nice year there at AAA playing first. They got some options there. I'm um, sorry, I'm having a little headphone trouble. Um, Are you back in biz? I don't know. I could hear you. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, and the Miguel Amaya note as well. He's being uh, given his assignment going to double and, A and, after and the they break say, too. And they, and they say Brendan Davis is supposed to play baseball in 2022. It's, he's not going to be out. There's a lot of really exciting things there on the farm. Mervis is one of them. Uh, the pitchers are, are, are one of them. I, my, my goal and, and congrats, like you said, congratulations to him leading all of baseball, all of baseball, all of baseball in, right. in our, in RBIs right now. He's mashed. He's mashed consistently. He's mm-hmm. got a nice swing, good power. Um, I, my, my minor league goal for the second half of the season, although for them it won't be a full half, is to get Caleb Killian right. Yes, that's huge. Yeah, I, and and you got to remember that's he something wasn't, to watch. He wasn't a huge high level prospect until he came here and started pitching great. But ever since and 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 the game that I was at against the Cardinals, I thought he was really solid. And then he had back to back just total clunkers. And then since being back in the minor leagues, his command just isn't right. So I'd like to see him get it going. And then and everything else I feel really good about. I feel really good. I mean, you take somebody like Morell. Morell's not even one of the 10, 15 most you know, highly touted guys. And he's, you know, Morell, yes, he has his flaws. He, he's not great at any position. Um, and he swings and misses a ton. But, you know, he, he's been up now for a couple of months, and that OPS is standing pat in the 820s. That average is standing pat in the 260s, 270s. He's got tons of power. I mean, you mm-hmm. want to talk about a guy with upside. If he ever figures out how to just put the bat in the ball a little more and go to right field, you're talking about a pretty damn good player. Um, so, you know, the, the, the system is loaded with these guys. Hopefully we get a change to see him in September so I don't fall asleep during the month. Uh, and it's exciting. It's, it's, it's a, it's a really tough time to be a Cubs fan in the present. It's a very exciting time to be a Cubs fan of the future. Wait till the off season when we start spending that cash money and bring in Bogarts and Musgrove and the rest of these guys. And we start to put together a roster that could compete and be the next great Cubs team. And you can catch it all here on Locked On Cubs. Do, 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 do. That's I a great a little, outro. We yeah, should just end I, it right there. Nah, nah, I get a little carried away. You know, I'm going to watch the game tonight. I have to stay away from dairy. It's been bothering me. So no pizza. Um, I might do like a little, <laughs> I, I might do like a little burger or something the during heck? the game. <laughs> Put my feet up. Um, okay. Yeah, watch you, an you, yeah, you know, what's going to stink. I'm sorry. So I'm go sorry. ahead. No, no, you go ahead. It's your show. If you want to get stuff in, get it in. No, I don't. I don't have anything. Go ahead. Okay. You know what's going to be annoying about tonight's game from a Cubs perspective? I'm going to root for Contreras and Hap to do well. And if one of them goes deep or hits well, the, the, the six or seven people that make me want to just turn off Twitter are going to be like, how can you not extend these guys? The those should be ashamed of themselves. That's it my every time. It's enough already. 
Let me root for my team and not have to have everything be a story. Makes sense why the Cubs are trading Contreras. If you can't see that, look a little harder. Do, 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 do. 8 p.m. Central Time this Thursday, we're going to be doing our Friday episode of Locked On Cubs Live for the people on YouTube. And what are we talking about? What? What are we going to be talking about on that? We're going to be talking about uh, your food choices over the last few years. Oh, well, (laughs) it could be a two-hour episode. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a healthy guy, folks. Go on. We're going to be taking background background suggestions. No, we're going to be previewing the Cubs' (laughs) second half. (laughs) Good one. The Cubs' second half, which uh, 70 games remaining. We're going to go over what to watch, who... Uh, we hope to continue playing well, maybe some more trade stuff, et cetera. So a lot on that program. That's going to be 8 p.m. Central Standard on Thursday, live on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash Cubs. And if for some reason you can't make that show, let me preview the second half right now. They're going to lose a lot of game. Be a part of the journey with us. Subscribe on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Locked on Cubs on YouTube. We just crossed the 800 subscriber threshold as we push to 1K. And follow along with us on Twitter at Locked on Cubs. And remember, you can leave us a voicemail or drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked on Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on MLB Prospects, with host Lindsey Crosby as he's going deep on the MLB Stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. For Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. This is Lockdown Cubs.